Hey guys, how are you? This story is pretty interesting and comes out of Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, like a lot of other cities across the US has seen um, protests going down for a few months now in the wake of George Floyd. And recently some of the demonstrators in a downtown area called New Lou, now I'm guessing this is sort of a gentrified area of Louisville, Kentucky. There's a lot of locally owned businesses. Now this group of demonstrators basically forced some of these businesses to shut down for a while and presented them with a letter that they wanted them to voluntarily sign. I'm using air quotes because there is no voluntary in the matter because if you don't sign the letter, there are consequences. And some of these consequences are um, they will and the demonstrators have said they will blast your business on social media. They'll report you to the Better Business Bureau. They will demonstrate outside of your business and hold protests. Uh, they will set up booths or tables outside of your business with competitors who will try to steal your business from people going into your business. So that is some of the things that will happen if you do not comply with this list of demands from the demonstrator. So I'm gonna read you a few of the demands. This is not everything. If you want the full letter that is on this website, I'm looking at the Courier Journal. It's a local news publication and they have several stories regarding this, plus the full list of demands or the full letter. So you can see what the demonstrators are wanting to require these business owners to sign. So some of the demands are as follows. Uh, adequately represent the black population of Louisville by having a minimum of 23% black staff. Purchase a minimum of 23% inventory from black retailers or make a recurring monthly donation of 1.5% of net sales to a local black nonprofit or organization. Require diversity and inclusion training for all staff members on a biannual basis and display a visible sign that increases awareness and shows support for the reparations movement. Now, in response to this, one of the business owners that received this letter um, uh, released a, a press release on his Facebook page. And in that, he, he says a few things. So, uh, according to the press, uh, blah, 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 sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, the release states that this restaurant was forced to close on July 24th. Now, this is the rest, the owner, Fernando Martinez, is the owner of this restaurant that we're referring to. So, he he made a press release on Facebook and where, in which he publicly disdained this letter and said that they were mafia-like tactics. He was saying that because of this demonstration on July 24th, he was forced to close down his business for several days. Um, his um, his workers did not want to come to work because they were in fear of their safety and they were told by demonstrators and protesters that if this list of demands was not met and if this letter was not signed um, and he did not put um, proof that he signed this letter in support for the activists um, on his business door, then his business would be effed with, which was what he was told. So he's being told that he's being extorted, he's being threatened, and that he's not going to bow down to these protesters. Okay, now he's also saying there comes a time in life that you have to make a stand and you have to really put your convic convictions and what you believe in. And he said, all good people need to denounce this. How can you justify sick injustice with more injustice? And that's what this is. This is basically an extortion letter and it's illegal. And the scary thing is a lot of businesses in the area actually did sign this letter. Now, do you think they actually really want to comply with all this? No, they don't. They just want to be left alone. They want to be able to have their businesses and not be threatened. Um, now, the interesting thing about Fernando Martinez, this business owner who's creating kind of a stink, is that he's actually a Cuban immigrant. He came to America on a raft from Cuba when he was 18 years old and he started this successful uh, restaurant group. It's called Olay Restaurant Group, where he has a few businesses in Louisville. And he loves Louisville. Um, he has black family members. He has gay family members. He says, he says, my business has always been open to everyone. We're accepting of everyone and we're not going to be discriminated against or extorted into following this list of demands. Um, now, he had a rally on Sunday with a lot of Cuban Americans who are showing support for him and Cuban immigrants who come to this country. And some of their signs were pretty interesting to me. Some of them said, we escaped socialism from Cuba. We came here to escape socialism. Be careful what you ask for. And they did. They came to America, the land of a free, the land of the free. And um, this 
this man and what he's accomplished being 18 years old, being an immigrant and coming from nothing and creating this successful restaurant group, that is the epitome of the American dream. And now people are trying to um, extort him. So he's not standing for this and, and he's um, staying true to his conviction. They had a gathering of Cuban Americans um, right in front of his restaurant that was uh, being threatened. Uh, I think there were over a hundred people there and they were left alone. There were no counter protesters. So hopefully this sort of goes away. I'm curious to see how this plays out. But another reason stuff like this bothers me isn't just the obvious of this is completely illegal. And he is right. These are mafia like tactics. You can't just go and give businesses a list of demands and tell them that if, that if they don't follow this, there will be consequences. You have no right to do that. You have no grounds to stand, no grounds to stand on, and this is very bad PR for your movement. Um, but something that really bothers me is I, I live in LA. I've talked about this a million times. I live in LA. I was here the night that we had the really bad riots. I believe it was May 30th, May 31st, that Sunday morning. I went in my neighbor. My neighborhood was one of the ones that was just ravaged in the riots. We had buildings burnt down. Um, businesses just completely looted. Everything was tagged and marked, marked up. A cab, F the police, BLM, like everything. So I, I went in my neighborhood the next day with a lot of my neighbors and we helped to sweep up the glass. We helped to get some of the spray paint off and to help board up some of the businesses that were destroyed. And a lot of these businesses that were destroyed were minority owned businesses. And these were businesses that were already suffering in the pandemic for having to be closed for months. And they had just nor ordered new inventory because we were gearing up to reopen again. And all that new inventory was destroyed. So they lost even more money. There were damages, all kinds of stuff. And all of these people I see saying, go support black businesses. All my friends that are saying, go support my minority owned businesses, black businesses. I haven't seen them say anything about all of these businesses that were destroyed because a lot of them were, and I saw it firsthand. Uh, nobody said anything about these people, about these businesses that were destroyed. I haven't seen anyone start a GoFundMe, any of these activists. They were all started by conservatives. Um, most of them, not all of them. Um, so it, this is just another area where this is completely hypocritical because your movement has single-handedly destroyed so many minority owned businesses and now you're going to go try to extort people and bully them into your list of insane demands. Sorry, you can't do that. Um, I'm curious to know what your thoughts on this story is and, um, what is almost even more concerning than the fact, I'm not even surprised that they're trying to do this because I don't think any of us are surprised at this point by anything, but what really concerns me is the businesses that actually did sign this. I saw this that same morning. I remember walking around and cleaning up and one of the things I saw, I got a little video of it. I'll, ha I'll have to find it. But one of the things I saw and it really broke my heart and I was shocked. I never thought I would see this in the neighborhood that I live in. But there is a nursing home that was sort of in the middle of all of this destruction. And the nursing home, they, they made a sign on the door that said, we have elderly and sick in here. Please leave us alone. The fact that people are having to do this in order to just be left alone. And that's why these business owners are signing this contract or letter, if you will. It's not because they want to comply with this. It's because they want to be left alone. They want to just go about their lives and have their business and take care of their family and to be left the heck alone. And now you have this Cuban immigrant who's literally the epitome of the American dream being extorted by people and being met with the very thing that he escaped from. I never thought that this would happen in the United States and America, but it is happening. So please talk about this story. And these are things that shouldn't be swept under the rug. And I know some people are saying, oh, it's not that bad. It's just this and that. Well, it's the grain of salt effect. And if you don't say anything or stand up for it now, it will get worse. And you give people an inch, they take a mile. Um, but let me know your thoughts on this. I hope you guys are having a great week. See you later. Bye.